Hello and welcome back to Alex Go Sailing. In this episode, I'm going to be making up some bunks for that boat so it can sit on this trailer. And uh, to do that, I'm going to be bending some marine ply and uh, fiberglassing that um, just so this boat can sit just right on this trailer and not be stressed in any of the places that it shouldn't be stressed. So let's get cracking. <laughs> I'm underneath the back of the boat now and you can see it sat on some bunks on the trailer. Now these bunks aren't the best because it holds it lengthways and that's not the way any of the bulkheads run. So we're going to make up some sort of uh, mould here that follows the shape of the hull to actually support it at the bulkheads where it was originally meant to be supported on its original trailer. Now to make these supports I'm going to be using some marine ply, a bit thicker than this but this is a test piece. I will make some cuts in it like you can see here, some are angled, some are straight. It allows me to bend it to the shape of the hull so you can see it allows it to follow the contour and keep it somewhat straight in the plane which would be nice. Um, but in combination with this I will be using some fiberglass. Now I have some left over from when I rebuilt Merakai um, and I will be flow coating it and things like that. It's going to get a bit of bunk carpet like this probably as well. Now up front here I did a little test piece of glass work to make sure I could get it to not stick to the boat and that it would actually work how I wanted it to work. So if I pull that off, but I've done about five layers of uh, chop strand matting and there's quite a lot of resin in there because it didn't squeeze out very well which is why I'm going to use the uh, method where I use the ply as well as the fiberglass because I can use the ply to squeeze out a lot of the resin and it allows me to apply the fiberglass to the ply to then stick it to the boat which should limit the amount of resin I actually need because this is just chop strand resined up and then slapped on and tried to cling film it to the boat which did work but there's a lot of excess resin in there which you don't really want um, but this is the, just a proof of concept and uh, effectively there's just going to be ply on the back of this and then I'll glass the back end of this flow coat all of this and then add a carpet to it and that'll just hold the boat in the cradle which would be nice and easy so that's the plan i'm going to go get the marine ply out and start cutting away measuring and uh getting the fiberglass ready right i'm outside the shed now and this is the 18 mil ply and you can see the grain runs across this way now i've done a few tests this is my main test piece you can see these are the cuts that i made this area you can see they've gone down to the final layer um, in this area they went down to the second to last layer and it just snaps so can't be having that you can see that snap there in that line um, but here you can see nice and flexible that's pretty much 90 degrees there nice and easy this side stays pretty smooth uh, with the grain going across i did a piece with the cuts going with the grain and you can see this side's like tearing up and like it's very bumpy and it's bend which is not very good so that basically means we'll be doing it across the grain for the cuts. Um, now I've got to cut out this sheet. Now on the bottom of the boat, it's very flat, but then at the edges, it kinks up quite a lot. It's a very boxy kind of shape for the hull at the back there. So what I'll have to be doing is very few cuts in the middle and then a lot of cuts where it bends. So I've got to probably take it up to the boat, measure, see how long I need to go before I need to start making those cuts. So hopefully it won't take too long. So I've cut the ply now, cut it that way and the lengthways and now it's about 180 to the end and uh, I've marked off the middle with a little line there so I know exactly where that is so I can line that up on the boat. Now to figure out where I'm going to put these lines and if I'm going to angle them or not, I've got a little idea that I'm going to try out on the boat and see if I can get it to work but it basically involves a bit of tape and a pen so nice and simple. You can see this is where the board is going to go. And you can see I've put some frog tape, painter's tape, whatever you want to call it, 
down underneath. So I've marked from this outrigger up here 70 centimetres to where it crosses this line here. Done that same on the other side and then followed the tape round so it stays straight to the boat. And the same in the back here, measured two foot off of that, gone underneath. So what I'll do now with this marker is first mark the top of this uh, new line and then the bottom of it will do it to the faded bottom. So we've got those two marks and then if I do the same for those two marks on the, at the other side I can then measure across, find the exact middle on the tape um, for each one. I can mark that. But it should be pretty easy to mark out where the tight bits are. Um, I might just indicate that on here where the tightest part would be so I know roughly where it would be and then I can mark out level on here as well so that I can work out where I need to put those angled cuts as well. So I've marked all of that up now, that's the middle as you can see with that nice M and this is the area that I think the curve's going to be because I measured about 14 inches in the middle here, I'll probably do uh, some wider lines on here um, but these are the edges and the edges I've actually fanned out so over there it's about 7 inches and this side it's about 8 inches so I just divided that up and I've got my lines that I want now. So I want to do is zip along them and if I find I need to do some more because it's like a wider bend or anything I can continue on into this side or continue into this side. But anywho I'm going to get the spare sheet put it underneath so I can keep it perfectly flat while I'm cutting. I haven't changed the dimension on the saw so I should be able to whip across. I'm going to get some ear defenders on because uh, I don't want to lose my hearing and I'll get the safety goggles on and we'll get ripping away. I don't know how long it's going to take but hopefully not too long. too shabby. So we're going to go test fit it on the boat now and uh, we'll see how it fits up, see if I have to go any further this way or this way with my cuts but I know what my middle line is. It might be a bit tricky getting these big ends through but we'll see how we go. I managed to slide it in under the back as you can see you can see where the lines finish there. I think I'm gonna to have to go to because I want it to come up to about well, if you can see here, when well, it come up the edge, maybe leave off about there to start to curve out flat. Yeah, I'm gonna pull this back out and add some more lines on. Right, new day, new haircut, and uh, got this out again. It's dry, and uh, we're gonna cut up some fiberglass. We've got the fiberglass over here, just some standard chopped around mat, and then we've even got some peel ply. We'll just cut that to the right size. I don't wanna go all the way to the end just yet, because these, these ends will curve back around, so I'll do that off the boat but we're just gonna try and get this main area done and then try and ratchet strap it to the hull. So I'm gonna get cutting some fiberglass. Right, just about to bring this over to the boat now, but I've added on these blocks mine the health and safety hazard but what the plan is is to put like a, a sticker or a, i don't know on the galvanized uh, bits of steel i've got up into this groove we've got one on each side so that we can jack it from the ground level because this would be bent up remember so uh jack it up and it'll hold it tight to the boat that's another option as well as a ratchet strap or however else i just thought i'd put that on now uh, instead of rushing when the resin's going off because it's Gonna put about 2%, a little less than 2% in. Should give me about an hour um, to get it all set in and fit underneath the boat, so. Right, about to get started. I've employed Daniel. 
He's uh, looking a bit more uh, cold than usually on the boat. And we've got all the stuff, we've got the roller stuff, we've got resin stuff, we've got the board over there. Slide it in there, nice and simple. We've put the cling film on there. So you can see the boat should be protected and shouldn't stick. We're also gonna add a peel ply, so we're hoping the peel ply, somewhat dry, will be able to slide underneath without sticking. Um, and then we can do our jacking. We've got jacks galore, adjustable posts, so we can use those blocks and pull it up when we get it underneath. So we're just gonna get, get to laminating, slide it all in, and you will see that now. Right, we just jacked it up. That worked better than I thought, I think. I'm glad I did the uh, post there with the jack on that black block of wood, because I was gonna ratchet strap it, but it would have been really hard. So doing the block on each side, jacking it, so we get it matching in the middle. Just gotta wait for it to cure. I've checked the tolerance. It's literally the thickness of the fiberglass gap around the hole from the wood. So that's looking quite good. A lot of resin squeezing out. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna leave this cure up. And uh, well, you'll see it in just a second. This will probably be tomorrow. So yeah, I'll see you tomorrow when this is all cured up. All right, it's the next day and it is a bit colder as you can tell with all the frost. It's all strapped up, we jacked it. And then this popped out. You can see we've got a little bit of voids and stuff, but there's only so much you can do with the way we were doing it. So we would peel this peel ply off, grind this back somewhat flat, and then we'll do a nice finishing layer on the inside, nice bit of gel coat. We still got to flare up these sides, so we still got to do that work, but it's in a good shape. Very stiff and rigid just on that side, so we've got to do the other side with fiberglass as well. And I've done some measuring up, as you can see on this side. So I want to make my cuts to make this top part bend over flat. Uh, should be nice and easy. Done the same on this side, matching heights. So it should be symmetrical. This is what protection looks like. Safety first, kids. Hangle grinder, circ saw. Done my cuts on the back. Only came through on this little bit here because I got a bit overzealous. I've had to remove a touch of fiberglass there because it's just preventing it from bending. But this is vaguely level, I'll have to measure it properly when, when we set this in with fiberglass and some filler stuff. But that bends down like so, as you can see in the joint. Yeah, time to cut up this side. All right, you should be able to see ratchet strap underneath back up to the other side and uh, lower it down. Near enough there, probably a couple more clicks, but I've got to pop it off again, fill it on both sides, clamp it down and leave it there. Probably set it up in about an hour or so. What I'm do is bend it, stuff as much in there as I can. There's not gonna be much needed in there. Probably did a bit too much. Now, I'm just gonna go around, clean up some of this squeeze out so it's a bit smoother. But apart from that, we'll come back in the morning and see how it's got on. So I'll see you then.
I rounded everything up, sanded it all back. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna glass this side first and um, just so I can get the other side easier so I can do the edges at the same time as I do the other side. All right, got Daniel here. Yeah. We've got the resins. Uh, I've cut some of the glass over there. We've uh, got two off-cut sheets so we can get the most out of it. One there, one there, Daniel's idea. Wrap it over and then two other sheets. So we're doing three layers and I'm not gonna bother with peel ply because it's on the bottom side and it's just a trailer bunk so who cares and uh, we will be flow coating it a bit later once we've done the other side and all of that so we're gonna get start mixing do that first layer let it soak in a little bit and then start laying up the glass set up now nice solid dry it's been what a couple of hours three hours maybe so nice and cured all I'm gonna do is gonna go around the edges grind it off so there's no overhanging bits we just thought we'd round it as much as we can um, it doesn't matter we're gonna tape over the edge with some uh, some other cloth and resin but like that's when we do the underside because we've got to do the just these flap edges. I'm tempted to put one sheet all the way across, just why not? Um, then do the tape at the same time, bond it in as much as possible. But yeah, grind up this, sand up the edges a little bit quickly, and then do some fiberglassing. That's all cleaned up now. Uh, I'm just going to wipe it down to get rid of uh, a lot of the dust, although I'm not too worried too much, as this is just a holder boat. I've got a little bit overkill, but yeah, the underside's nice. I prepped the edges here where the, the tape, uh, fiberglass tape, is going to go, um, and the edges they're rounded, so hopefully the tape works quite well. It's not um, chopped strand mat; it's like a woven. Um, fiberglass so it should wrap around a bit easier. I think we're good to go so I'm gonna clean this up and then get to fiberglassing. Alright got my resin gonna start fiberglassing this side two layers that side two layers then the whole wrap then the edges. Probably get dark by the time we've done this. It's all cured up now, and you can see the tape job's done right on the edge. Only a few voids here and there, not really concerned about it. I'm going to throw some gel coat on this, just to make it all one colour, and then we can put our carpet on it. We'll be drilling holes through it to put bolts in it and stuff, but I mean, for now, that's all we need. So I've prepped it, wiped it down, um, acetone towel stuff. Um, Cleaned all the dust off it, and then all I'm going to do now is mix up the gel coat, which is in this pot here, as you can see. Mix well before use. This is a brush top coat, blah 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 blah. So, yeah, we're going to mix this up and throw it on. another day and this is all dried up now so pretty nice finish all over some like little bits of fluff that are in there don't really care about it too much but it's rough enough that I can actually stick this stuff to it this is like a um, foam backed bunk carpet kind of thing 
so I'm hoping the stuff I've got to stick it to this is done well and I've uh, cut it to length just so it goes over the edge because when the boat comes in it's probably going to roll on these quite heavily um, it overlaps just a little bit the edge so I don't mind too much we're just going to stick it down to see if this stuff works and the stuff I'm using is my favorite if you can read that there sticks like you know what so yeah and this is the fast cure stuff so 15 minutes I'm going to see how well it does I've got a bunch of tubes in there and we're going to see how we get on Right, just like that, it's done. So I'd use the hammer because it whacks it out nice and smooth. So this should cure up, it's already sticking pretty well. So now that this one's complete, minus some holes for bolts and things like that, I've got to make up the smaller version for the front of the boat now. Would you look at this setup here at the crane and you've got this thick like fence post because it goes across the width of the boat as a spreader bar so we're using that one ratchet strap let's just jack it up get the tension on it you can see that beam there basically we're going to drop that out and have to slide in that that uh, support we made up and then drop it there so i'm going to jack this up now Jacking this boat up is definitely a sketchy affair, but getting these cradles in will make it way easier as I will actually have something solid to jack on. This will become very important in the next episode where it's time to switch out the trailer for a different one. I have also decided to make this coming series of DIY videos based on individual projects rather than following the timeline of me working on multiple ones as I think it'll be easier for you to follow and be more useful to you all. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.